Hello and welcome to Bharat Chatti Dot End. We are going to be talking about two major issues today. The first one is the MQ-9 unmanned aerial vehicle in American origin, and the second one is G's F-414 engine. Now, as far as the Indians are concerned, uh, we expect some sort of a decision on both issues during the Prime Minister's visit to the United States shortly. And the Indian side has by large done its paid work completely. Even the Defence Acquisition Council's approval to the UAV acquisition has been given. Now, let's see how, what kind of equipment is this and why is there so much of excitement about it. Uh, I have with me uh, Air Commodore S.P. Singh. Air Commodore S.P. Singh, let me first introduce him. He is no stranger, of course, to Bharat Sakti. Welcome, Air, Air Commodore. You've been here earlier with us. Yeah. And, uh, well, he's an experienced fighter pilot. He has over 3,000 hours of flying. He's a specialist in air defense operations. And, well, uh, today he's going to tell us about both this uh, UAVs as also the uh, a jet engine that we talked about, F-414. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Chatterjee. And it's always a pleasure to come to Bharat Shakti and uh, share views. Thank you so much. Right. Uh, we'll first talk about the UAVs. We'll talk about the predators. Uh, firstly, it, uh, I, I presume there are different versions to it because it's going to be coming to the Army, Navy, as also the Air Force as far as the Indians are concerned. And uh, they would require, they would have different operational requirements. So if you can tell us a little bit about the predators as they're called, the family uh, as such, and then there's variations that we have. Absolutely. So actually, uh, first of all, I must start with that we are very fortunate that we are getting the state-of-the-art equipment, technology-intensive uh, equipment, which is the need of the hour of our armed forces. And uh, the way diplomatic channels have worked and the strategic imperatives have worked out, uh, it is in our favor and we are going to get it which US earlier would have not uh, shared with us. So, to start with, uh, this uh, unmanned combat aerial vehicle which is coming, actually it is the RPA series, remotely piloted vehicle. I uh, will specify as to why. Uh, it has got actually mainly three versions, three types of different types of uh, uh, UAVs. First and foremost, the oldest version is the Predator, which is 1B, MQ-1B. Now, this uh, is the oldest version which showed its strength and its prowess in the Afghanistan war. It was extensively used and this is merely a surveillance uh, drone which flies at a much higher height. It can fly up to almost 50,000 feet height and uh, it can stay in the air for as long as almost 30 hours. So it made, met most of the requirement of the Afghan war for the US and it was able to do its job. Additionally, it carries the uh, state-of-the-art weapon which is the Hellfire uh, missile which are anti-armor uh, weapons, very, very uh, strong weapons which can destroy a lot of targets. So, Hellfire weapons, these are precision guided weapons, as long as, along with it is to get pave way JDAMs, which are once again a precision guided uh, bombs. Now, these weapons were carried by a aircraft like a drone, which is in my head, is something which is uh, really to be talked about and it is something which is, gives you strength to our armed forces. So, this was the oldest version, Predator. And most of the time it was used for surveillance and it has got two versions mainly. One is called the Sky Guardian and another is the Sea Guardian. Sea Guardian obviously for the uh, oceanic uh, search and it has got the anti-submarine capability. Sea, Sky Guardian is, can fly at much higher altitude like what we have in the LSE area. It will be very useful in those areas to be flown and we can now maintain that areas like uh, Galwan, Chushul, all these data round the clock under surveillance. Otherwise, now we have to fly Su-30 sorties or take satellite imagery. All these things will be, you know, we can fly with single aircraft flying for 30 hours, we can keep getting round the clock. And it's got all uh, the kinds of IR, EOIR systems, so it can do day-night uh, surveillance. This is one part. Next was, was the, uh, the MQ-1C. Now, MQ-1C was mainly designed to do a long-range communication. So, it's to get a ball in the air and go farthest, uh, a long distance uh, place and used to work as a relay communication for various nodes of the communication so it could work and this was the main USP of that uh, version. The third version which is the most recent is the rap Rapier or Reaper. Now, Reaper is the one, I just want to add, recently we heard that Al Jawari was killed uh, by the uh, US drone. This was the Reaper which has killed and this is the most potent uh, UCAV out of the series, which carries almost double the weapon size 
uh, the uh, rapier is carrying two alpha amyloid, carries four alpha amyloid, and more than same way JADAMs it can carry almost double the amount, and same it has got also the longer endurance. It can stay almost almost about uh, 35 to 36 hours in the air and travel larger distances. So these are the differences between the two, and that is how uh, we have uh, gone in for the uh, rapiers. So we are going for a absolutely. So, what we are going in for now is presently the talk is only of the uh, predator version because that is what the US has agreed to share. Obviously, US will not like to share its latest version state of the art rap uh, uh, Reaper, Reaper. Reaper because obviously there, there is the uh, US uh, best of the uh, UCAP they have, but they have agreed to at least give us the predators. So that serves our purpose because both naval will have the uh, Sea Guardian version and the uh, Army and the Air Force will have the Sky Guardian version. Okay. Uh, right. Uh, to go a little further, you know, what's the track record like of this systems that we're going in for? Has it been in use in some other forces, etc., whatever uh, we yeah. it so far? Absolutely. Absolutely right, sir. There, anything when you want to buy such state-of-the-art, obviously, we'd like to know what is the track record. So, these, especially Predator, has got a very well-proven track record in the Afghan war. Almost about 15 years it has been used. And this has shown they were able to do precisely attack the hideouts of the terrorists, Taliban terrorists and all, and uh, cause the thing. is to give on absolutely uh, real-time surveillance data of the movement of the uh, terrorists and all those uh, things, hideouts. It was to give the details. And this is where it was used extensively. So same way, uh, what has happened for our cases, even our Navy has been using this for almost about two years now. Uh, on a lease agreement, uh, it has started about 2020, it has started and we have, this lease agreement has been agreed now and we have been using, after the two years usage that we had over Indian Ocean by our Navy, a uh, Navy is very well satisfied with the performance and that is how the Navy has now become the lead service for procurement of these uh, things. So there is a well proven record and Reaper, as I just told you, the killing of the Aljawari in the balcony of the house that he was is the most precise attack that can ever be carried out. And this is where the, this uh, equipment stand. So normally when you bring in equipment as uh, costly as these, you have a technical evaluation, you have of course uh, uh, commercial bid and technical bids and all that. Yeah, a competitive assessment of short of similar things all over. Uh, we haven't really gone through the whole process. Of course, you said they are on lease to us. But what's the reason really, just to clarify uh, that? Sir, the reason what happens is, when you do RFA placement, there's a request for information, a request for proposal, uh, then you expect that there will be a large number of uh, competitors who will bid for the thing. But in certain cases, if the uh, only one country holds this equipment, then there's no option but to go in for the best equipment from that country only. The fortunate part for us is that it is coming through the government-to-government -government interaction and there is no middleman involved. And this is coming through the uh, FMS route, which is purely between the two heads of the state decision are taken. It's a strategic decision that that government is giving, which is the US government is giving us, is ready to share the technology and share with us, uh, which is non-NATO country, as well as for us, we are also getting directly from the uh, best of country. So if there was a competitive available, just we would have gone through the whole process that you are calling. But since there was no way, the only way to do assessment was to take them on lease do trials and assess for yourself whether the capability suits our requirement or not, which has been done by the Indian Navy for the last two years. And uh, the satisfaction reports have gone to the uh, ministry and they have approved it and that's how this procurement is now taking place. Uh, one last question about yeah, this yeah, uh, UAVs. Uh, the question is regarding we are talking about Atman Nirvartan quite a bit these days. So is there any technology transfer as far as the UAVs are concerned? So about the technology transfer, there is a little uh, issue which is going to be resolved when, we, when the Prime Minister is there. But as I see it, the US has got a system of that non-technology transfer uh, binding to the non-NATO alliance partner. And we are not a NATO partner. And that's why obviously the transferring technology, Congress will have to do approval and which is very unlikely to come at this stage. And if it comes, there will be nothing like it. We will be most benefited by this. And then the, the way our industry is struggling to get onto the uh, drones and fire for ourselves. There is a lot of effort going on in our country. The startups have been promoted, IITs, IIT, uh, NITs, uh, youngsters have been given the startup assessment by PLI schemes to get out and do R&D. But there is a lot of limitation that is existing as of now. 
and since the us is the lead in this technology uh, though they're giving us the equipment in my particular opinion i feel as of now technology transfer may not take place okay if it takes place it's a bonus okay uh, right let's get on to uh, general electric f414 the engines for our jet fighters etc well, you have the uh, what appeals to me straight away is the fact that you have the uh, tejas mark 1 1 alpha and then we're looking at two now uh, there's an engine being used already what was the requirement to jump from that to the, this and is this also the engine meant for on the futuristic let's say to mark 2 so now shifting from predator to the uh, engine g engine first of all i want to tell our viewers is that engine technology is actually the most niche technology on the entire fighter aircraft or any jet aircraft uh, system because engine is the life is is the soul and uh, it has got very very precise uh, material very very fine material very balanced uh, compressor blades and all and the flow of the air it has also has to produce a thrust and this technology is with very minimal country that right of today us is of course obviously us got russia has got and uh, france and uk with collaboration with us and uh, this thing they have and unfortunately even china uh, has been struggling like us but doesn't have so you can see the uh, way the engine technology is held by very very it's a premium technology if i put it so now we wanted to build our arp river a card in replacement to mic 21s which are phased out which are now almost phased out and in that tejas was the choice while we did uh, initially since the engine was not there we contacted for the f404 which is a lower version of the present engine which is on offer and it has certainly and it suited our requirement that requirement for the lca mark 1 and mark 1a while the parallelly cavalry engine work was in progress and due, because of technical glitches uh, not being able to meet the end criteria the cavalry project for the lca finally has been shelved and we have to live with mark 1 uh, the F f404 now as we move forward to mark 2 which is a higher grade version which is the full potential of the lca as well as the new aka which is coming amka which is advanced medium combat aka which is the fifth generation aka obviously you can have a higher grade engine which is more powerful which can do which has got higher thrust to weight ratio these various criteria are there which can sustain performance so you needed a better engine and then there is nothing better than f414 which is the engine design is almost the same with certain modification upgradation and that's why we went in for this engine and this aka engine will be used even in the tet bf that is the uh, twin engine deck uh, based fighter aka that was being designed for the navy so all these future is aka will have this f414 engine and that's why once again we are fortunate that the us has agreed to give this engine to us and uh, it'll be uh, that's how the leap frog will take place for our country well thank you as you handled it very comprehensively and possibly answered a couple of questions that i had but uh, uh, let's go a little further and uh, this transfer of technology is something that which is still being debated perhaps is not yet fully you know, stabilized <clears throat> so are we going to get the technology really the uh, initial proposal what has agreed uh, with the us was that uh, the entire aircraft uh, will be built here in india under make in india concept and they will have the technology and few certain issues certain uh, points will be transferred over certain amount of manufacturing or the parts will be done in india to get the indian content and all that's all but the full fledged indian technology once again the same issue comes up that the us obviously there's a uh, ruling that us has got for the non nato countries to transfer the technology once again congress approval will have to be taken since a pm is addressing the congress both houses uh, in us it is likely that he may pitch for this and once again uh, with president biden when he is having a Uh, official meeting later after addressing congress it is likely that this technology transfer may be talked about whether it will succeed or not 200% technology we are not sure that as the days go by we'll see it. but i still have a, a hunch that uh, us may not agree for 100% transfer technology this is once as i said it's a niche technology i just want to add uh, the point which you are asking about the you know this see in f14 f414 and f44 the major difference is in the thrust the technology we are talking about the f404 had about about 78 kN thrust now f414 will have 90 almost 100 kN so there's a jump of almost 25% thrust 
Then the air flow, mass air flow, which is required for producing the thrust, is increased by 16 percent. And thrust to weight ratio, which gives the maneuvering capability to the aircraft reserve of power, that has gone up by almost 15 percent. So these are the changes that are going to come in, and that's how we'll be able to give in the FGFA aircraft or the MCA as a TED bear. Right. Uh, now you talked about it that we are going to be benefited uh, one hell of a lot after all. The engine technology is the most difficult technology to really master and obtain. Now, uh, overall defense preparedness. What do you see the impact of getting this kind of a technology into the? In fact, I will not talk about only this engine. I will widen the scope uh, for the last about if you see close to about uh, eight to ten years, almost a decade now. The way we are. Acquiring the technology and the uh, best equipment from the U.S. has made a sea change in our defense. I'll start from we started with C-130, which is a strategic lift taker, a state of the art, and then it was used in the Pathan Court when the terrorists had come in. It was orbiting over the Pathan Court airfield, they were able to pinpoint the terrorists on ground while flying in air. That is the kind of capability it has got day night. Then we went for C-17 Globemaster, uh, which has which can carry 60 ton weightage. And across the globe, uh, we have seen during the vaccine diplomacy, during the other uh, HADR mission, uh, human uh, assistant uh, disaster relief, and the way we have picked up our people from Ukraine, Sudan, and brought them here, all this way, Globe Master has come in play, and it is really uh, worth the find here. Then we, in the helicopter fleet, we went for Chinook, which is once again a heavy lift aircraft, which we never had that capability, so we are able to airlift our tanks to the. Uh, the dark region and place them there under slung. Then we had the uh, Apache, which has given a uh, absolute attack helicopter capability, has enhanced very much. Like this, we have been continuing. Boeing is now coming in. Lockheed Martin is coming in, and we have now the deal, Boeing deal, massive Tata mega deal has been done. C two ninety five aircraft. So all this is a series of deals which are taking place, and this is Predator, which is coming in, as well as now the engine. Now all this, if you put them together. Our capability against main adversary now, China, has gone multi-fold. Because China is a very technologically advanced nation, which uh, has moved forward in all the warfare capabilities, especially in the hybrid warfare. And then to match up to that, we need certain support, and this what is coming. So our defense capability is going to, if I say, uh, go if not ten times, at least twenty times. Right. Uh, thank you so much. I'm uh, glad you put it across so clearly to our viewers. I mean, we do benefit technologically right across the spectrum as far as uh, the uh, let's say act activities that we've had with the uh, U.S. Yeah. Uh, in the last couple of years in terms of defense acquisition. Thank you so much for uh, having spared your time and joined us. It is always a pleasure to come and talk to you, sir. Thank you so much. And thank you, viewers. Thanks for logging on to BharatShakti.in. Do log in now and then, and you will find such interesting stories. Also, visit our social media pages. Thank you.